Hello, everybody. My name is Miles Brown. I'm the professor of double bass and jazz at the University of Delaware. And today I'm going to share my presentation, Ligand Lines, Creating Clear Harmonic Motion in Bass Lines with you. Today we're going to talk about everybody's favorite chord progression in jazz tunes, the 2-5-1 progression. Now, what is a ligand line? Well, this is Bert Ligon. He is uh, the director of the jazz studies program at University of South Carolina in Columbia, South Carolina. He's a guitarist and a pianist, and he's an author and composer. A couple years ago, he wrote this book called Connecting Chords with Linear Harmony. I stumbled across this book and I immediately knew that it would be useful um, for my jazz improvisation classes, but also for my bass uh, lessons too. Um, it had a, a lot of great information about how to construct solos um, and how to play over 251 progressions. Uh, using three basic outlines that he describes in the book. Now, he says that uh, jazz solos are not made up of solely these outlines, but he found after transcribing uh, hundreds of solos, uh, solos that he transcribed and that his students transcribed, that he found that these outlines were in almost every bebop-oriented solo uh, that uh, he looked at. And so he decided to take that information and create this book. Ligon states, Outlines are harmonically specific lines that connect chords through guide tones. And the operative word here being uh, the word connect. Uh, sometimes when we're creating bass lines, when we're walking lines, we tend to start on the root. And maybe we'll lead that to another root and then finally to another root and root and root, 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 root etc. Uh, what I found that is that uh, Ligon's ideas help us get away from that root-based baseline motion. So now while Ligon's ideas are mainly applied to jazz solos, in other words, improvised solos from horn players or pianists, I use them with my students at the University of Delaware and uh, my private students uh, to progress past basic chord tone baseline construction. In other words, in a 2-5-1 progression, you might hear something like this. It goes root of the two chord, root of the five chord, root of the one chord. These outlines help us get away from that cliche progression. So there are three basic outlines that Ligon describes in his book. The first one, outline number one, starts on the two chord, and we start on the third of the two chord. So here's a two, five, one progression, and we're starting on the third of that. So here's F natural over a D minor seven chord. Then we have a little blank space. We'll talk about it in a little bit. And the next note we're gonna look at is the third of the dominant chord or the third of G7, which is B natural. And then the last one note we're gonna look at right now is, uh, is, is the third of the C major seven chord, which is E natural. So notice we have the third of the D minor seven chord, the third of the G7 chord, and the third of the, e, of the uh, C major seven chord, which is E. The next step in the process is to get, connect those thirds together using the chordal sevenths of, the, uh, of each of the chords. So we start on F, we find the chordal seventh of D minor seven, which is C, and we lead that to the third of uh, G7. And then we find the chordal seventh of G7, which is F, and we lead that to the C major seven in the third bar of the two, five, one progression. And then all we have to do is fill in the dots. So we start on the third again, and then we connect to the root by using a passing tone of E natural, play the root of the chord. And then we've got our chordal seventh, which leads to the third of the G7, and we connect to the root of the G7. Um, and there's the G on beat three of the G7 chord, and we connect the chordal seventh to the third of the C major seven chord, and that's where we rest. The whole thing sounds like this. We get a nice uh, scalar line that descends. You can actually hear the harmonic motion um, without even uh, without playing the roots in a traditional way. For example, uh, if we, I play this over the roots, it may sound like this. And we get our two, five, one progression. However, with the line alone, you can still hear that that two chord moves to the five chord and the five chord moves uh, to the one chord in a really smooth way. Okay, so that's uh, outline number one. Let's move on to outline number two. And this outline ascends from the root of the two chord. 
So here's outline number two. We start on the two chord, D minor seven, and we play the root, the minor third, the fifth, the minor seventh. And then that turns around and connects again to the third of the G7 chord and walks down just like the first one. So again, I'll play that. Ligon mentions that this sounds like uh, Thelonious Monk's famous tune, Round Midnight, which is here. And if you'll notice in the fifth measure, we have this outline, but in the key of G flat major, we're starting on the A flat minor seven chord. That sounds like this. Now it doesn't have the stepwise motion connecting the third to the chordal seventh and to the third of the G flat major chord, but you can hear that the, the outline one flat three, five flat seven to the third of the dominant chord gives us that outline. Let's move on to the next outline. And this one starts on the fifth of the chord and descends. Again, connecting the chordal seventh of the two chord to the third of the dominant, dominant chord. It sounds like this. So five, three, one, seven, three, and then we descend. Again. So we've got three thing, three outlines now. We've got the first one, which is descending from the third to connect to the third of the dominant chord. We have ascending from the root, starting on the root, ascending by thirds, and then connecting to the third of the dominant chord, and then descending from the fifth, and again, connecting to the third and descending to the third of the major seven chord in the third measure. When I spoke to Bert Ligon, he said that his colleague, Mike Steinell calls this the three in, two out uh, uh, concept. And I will explain that in a second. Three in being the three outlines that I just showed you. And then there are two ways to get out of the chord progression. And he mentions them like this. So in the very, the, the very first outline, we have the descending third, descending from the third. Okay, and uh, so it's what I'm calling outline one, variant one. The second variant comes in the dominant uh, chord measure on the G7, where instead of descending from the third to connect to the third of the major seven chord in the third measure, we're now uh, turning around and arpeggiating back up. So we descend to the third, and now instead of continuing down, we turn around and arpeggiate up to the fifth and then the seventh of the chord and then the ninth of the chord, and then we resolve to the fifth of the major seventh chord after that. I'll, I'll play that one more time. So this one I would call outline one, outline one, variant two. So there's three outlines that start the measure and then two variants to close out uh, the progression. So let's take a look at that one again. Here is variant one versus variant two. Uh, the first line here is variant two with variant two. And then the second line here is outline three with variant two. One thing I want to point out here that's very interesting is that we have um, this section here, which as I played before, and then we go up. It's very common for bebop musicians to actually take that measure and uh, displace the octave, what's known as octave displacement. So here you'll notice that that's those same notes are just down the octave. This is a very common thing for Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker and other bebop uh, musicians to do in their solos. That sounds like this. So it's the same pitches as the first variant, except now it's just dropped down an octave. Either one works just as well. So not all jazz tunes are made up of major 251s. Of course, we have tunes that are that use minor 251s too. And the only thing you have to do here is adjust for the mode. So I went from C major mode to now C minor mode. What uh, notice in this progression in the first measure, I changed E natural in the major mode to E flat. In the second mo uh, measure, I changed A natural to A flat. What this gives us actually sounds very close to or it actually is the, the harmonic minor scale. 
And that sounds like this. With the bass notes. The one very interesting thing is that uh, you can see with the blue arrow here is that the third of the dominant chord has to be the leading tone of the key. In other words, it has to be raised still. This is common practice in all of tonal music and we retain that, uh, that concept here uh, for, uh, for these ligand lines. So here is um, outline two, shifting the mode to minor mode instead of major mode. Notice again that I used A flat in the first measure to give us the flat five of the D minor seven flat five chord and A flat in the second measure to give us the flat nine of the G seven flat nine sound. And here's what uh, outline three variant one would sound like in the minor mode. I'm sure you've heard this progression in lots of people's solos. It's very common in bebop oriented language. Um, and now we're just applying it to our bass lines. Hopefully you can still hear that the progression of two, five to one is still happening, regardless of whether or not we play uh, the root on the downbeat. What I will do is continue on to uh, discuss a real live example of where these could be found. So this is of course not a bass line. This is Tom Harrell, the trumpet player, um, playing a solo on the rhythm changes tune, Chasing the Bird. Uh, the green highlight is uh, outline number one, the red highlight is outline number two, and the blue highlight is outline number three. And I'll just play uh, this short snippet uh, of solo so you kind of kind of get a sound of what this might sound like in a real context. <laughs> So of course that's a solo, it's not a bass line. There are instances of this in Paul Chambers' uh, bass lines, in Ray Brown's bass lines, and many of the other great bass players that we study. I uh, challenge you to go find some transcriptions where, uh, where that happens. But let's make some on our own. So let's practice walking over changes together. To practice this in context, we'll use the chord progression for the tune Tune Up by the saxophonist Eddie Vincent. So here's the lead sheet. You can pause it now if you wanna take a look at that but we're mostly concerned with the uh, chord changes here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each of these four measures, uh, uh, the four lines, uh, four bars per line, and uh, apply our ligand lines to this. So we'll take the first four measures, which is uh, a two, five, one in the key of D major, and we'll play outline number one. And then we'll do the same thing uh, to play the outline that we've actually already played, uh, the uh, outline number one in the key of C major, and outline number one in the key of B flat major. And then at the bottom, this is not a two, five, one. So we're just gonna arpeggiate the chords for this line. So that this is kind of what this is gonna look like. So here we go, outline one, variant one, which as a reminder, starts on the third of the minor chord and descends to the third of the dominant chord and the major chord. So here we go, one, let's find our Gs. Here we go, one, two, a one, two, three, four. And I'll just fill in the rest of this measure with D major sound. Same here.
okay? Notice in these measures, you can fill in those chords however you like, as long as you're sticking to the, the, the mode of D major, C major, and B flat major. Or just stick to chord types. So that's outline one, variant one. Let's try outline two, variant one, which is starting from the root of the minor seven chord, arpeggiating up and then turning around and walking back down. So here we go, E minor seven again. A one, two, three, four. At any time, feel free to pause this and go back and listen again, or you can uh, pause it and uh, practice on your own. So here's outline three, variant one, which as a reminder, starts on the fifth of the minor seven chord and descends to the third of the dominant chord and the major seven chord. A one, two, three, four. So let's go into variant two now. So here's outline one, variants two, starting on the third and then arpeggiating up and resolving to the fifth of the major seven chord. One, two, a one, two, three. Outline two, variant two. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Last one, outline three, variant two, starting on the fifth of the minor seven chord. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So those are the three in, two out, three outlines with two variants for the tune tune up. You can go back, pause it now and go back and check all uh, any of those out if you need um, uh, time to do so. But I thought I would uh, do one last thing with you and uh, play a tune that has both major two five ones and minor two five ones. Now I'm gonna improvise a bass line. I'm gonna use some of these outlines, some of these variants, or I may not. To me, the key of a good walking bass line is actually in the variety of the line. So not repeating yourself too often from one um, phrase to the next. So I may play a walking line that in incorporates these outlines. I may not. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I would encourage you to pause it, maybe rewind uh, and transcribe the line uh, if you like the line and you want to play it yourself, or to pause it right now, look at the lead sheet and improvise your own. Practice improvising your own uh, with your bass and see how you do. 
So here's autumn leaves. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So that's my presentation. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you're able to look at these lines, these lines by Bert Ligon, and uh, start to use them in your own bass lines uh, when you get a chance. I do have to mention, uh, I'm not getting any kickbacks or anything from Mr. Ligon or uh, from the publishing company. I just found that this was a remarkable way and a concise way of organizing some of this tonal language, some of this information um, to provide for my students to help them understand how to play over two, five, one chord progressions in a little bit of more creative way. If you have any more questions uh, for me, I'd be happy to answer them. You can find me at jazzbase at udel.edu udel or looking at the University of Delaware uh, School of Music website. And I do want to say a big thank you to uh, Bert Ligon for writing this book and for talking with me uh, the other day about his uh, thoughts on it. So thank you very much. Thank you also to the USB, uh, to the USB. Thank you also very much to the ISB for having me uh, present this uh, information to you. And I hope you have a good rest of the convention. Thank you.